Welcome to our channel. In this short series of videos, we'll be sharing our experience of volunteering on a farm in Elands in exchange for free accommodation. In this episode, we took care of all of the animals on the farm and brought the camera along to capture the highlights. It was a good opportunity to gain some inspiration for the types of farm animals we might want to adopt in the future. So join us on a day in the life of a hobby farmer where we share what we learned about chickens, goats, cows and horses and end the day with taking the farm dogs for a swim in the river. Now it's time to feed the chickens. Come on, chicky chooks. At this farm, we learned that chickens are a pretty low maintenance animal to keep because they can eat kitchen scraps and forage for insects and other things in your yard to keep themselves entertained that way. But I think the best part about that is that wherever there's chickens, there's no ticks. And here in Australia, paralysis ticks are really common. So it's very handy to have an animal that eats them. Aside from scratching around for insects, they also did require some grain-based chicken feed every morning and night, which as you can see, they get pretty excited about. They also had a small egg laying area where we could just open the lid and grab the eggs. I'm not sure why they were okay with us taking their eggs, but I guess that's just how it works. Oh, so there's only one that actually pecks. This one's got no eggs. No eggs. What about you, Mrs. Peck Peck? <laughs> Pick. Pick, pick. Pick, pick. So pecky. Hopefully not many more because that's about all I can hold in my little hands. It's so warm under there. <laughs> yeah. Look at all these eggs. Oh my. Let me just put these here temporarily. <laughs> At night, they'd come back to their coop where we'd lock the door to keep them safe. <laughs> oh, no, look at him come. Hello, hello, goats. Goats are also a really interesting animal because they can eat just about anything. This is of course an advantage and a disadvantage of having goats. Where the owners had some out of control vegetation, <laughs> these guys really helped to reduce the amount of grass and shrubs, which was great. However, if they get anywhere near your garden, you pretty much won't have a garden anymore. They love to eat most kinds of fruit and vegetables, even citrus fruits and the leaves off small trees. We did give them some hay as a treat, but they generally just found their own food. Goats are inquisitive, gentle and social animals. So aside from eating your garden, they're great for entertaining kids and even played with our dogs. I always thought of cows as being the most calm and relaxed animals. And at this farm, I learned that this is true most of the time, but they can be pretty demanding about food. <laughs> Bit of a burp. Every time they saw their owners approaching, they'd all get really excited and make a lot of noise as they wanted a treat. I guess I would too, if all I ever ate was grass. 
They're coming. Come on. Oh, you're eating the poo. Rufus, leave the poo. And he's peeing on it. We also had the chance to witness something really special during our stay. One of the cows had a baby and we were lucky enough to witness the entire thing. The herd all welcomed their new member with excitement, but little Paddy was the most keen and kept close by the entire time. It was really cool to see how quick the little cow started walking and within minutes she was already looking for milk. So now it's time to feed the baby cow. You can see her coming over now. Oh, there she is. Give me my milk. <laughs> ah, not me, not me. <laughs> Wrong one. Squirting again. We've been waiting all day for this. It means you got to hold it up higher a bit. That's called punching the tip. <laughs> Look at this one. Give me milk too. Oh my god. Really punching that tip. It's up high. I think she just wants more milk quicker. a different point of view. No, Jamie. Ah, <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> Jamie, it's not for you. <laughs> no. It's the baby's milk. Put your tongue away, He's got Jamie. His tongue out. Jamie. The animals we spent the most time with at this farm were the horses. Olaf, are you dead? There were two <laughs> miniature horses, an ex-racing horse, and also a mule. All of the horses were really chill except for the <laughs> mule, who was very cheeky. His name is Olaf. Being a mule meant Olaf was a bit more intelligent, which made him have a quirky personality, sometimes even a bit annoying, because he'd always be chasing our dogs or trying to nibble us. He also annoyed the other horses quite a lot, but his personality was the most memorable. <laughs> Big stretch. <laughs> horses are also a really independent kind of animal to have on a farm. We generally find their own food, but they do require good fences. Because when they need a place to scratch an itch, a fence without any barbs on it is their first preference. Besties. Bud, bud. Oh, no nibbles. No <laughs> nibbles. We don't want the nibbles. Last part of this adventure had us going to the creek with the four farm dogs. They absolutely love swimming and running around the farm. The creek was a really peaceful place to relax and the freezing cold water was good fun for swimming in, for those who accepted the challenge. Thanks to everyone joining us on this adventure so far. 2022 has been a really random year where we've gone from preparing to develop our own homestead to spending almost the entire year on other people's farms while we waited for the flood season to end. 
So our off-grid journey took a bit of a detour, but as a result, we've learned a lot of new skills from all of the places we've visited. For 2023, we're excited to get back home and start on our dreams of building our off-grid paradise again. And wherever you guys are, and whatever challenges 2022 brought your way, 2023 is now upon us, and we wish you all the very best for the year ahead. <laughs>